What did I do? Can you guys hear me? Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> I could, first, I couldn't figure out how to um, get to the video that we scheduled, but I figured oh, it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And now I'm sharing it to um, Facebook. Yeah, I'm always doubting my my methods. Can you guys hear me? Yay, okay, good. Let me get my great big blue laptop out of the way. And then, okay, good. I'm going to um, angle the camera down a little bit because I feel like it's um, too high over my head so that they can uh, everybody can see the um, the stab it a little bit better. Welcome everybody. I'm pretty darn sure that I have not made a squirrel since we made the tutorial. So very quick. I did not prepare and so very quickly I just had to watch my tutorial so that I remembered what we did. I'm going to angle the camera just I'll be right back. It's always a little sacrifice of the top of my head so that we can it's not really a sacrifice on anybody's on anybody's part. It just makes me feel like I have to slouch when it's cutting my head off. <laughs> um, but now I have to sit here and wait because there's like a 15 second delay. So I have to yep. see how it looks. On my, on my screen, you just walked away. <laughs> Joyce says she is a sleepy squirrel this morning. Aww. Me too. I hope I'm a good leader today because I'm on three nights of being up from like 1 to 3 a.m. Oh, thank you, Judy. Oh, it's actually still in it. Okay, but, okay. I mean, you can see your surface better, mm -hmm. but. Okay, I think we're okay. Which way do you I need just, to move? You just don't have to slouch. Yes. I have, I'm going to work from a supply pack, so hopefully you guys have um, some 22 gauge wire, well, the supply pack, or um, some 22 gauge wire, off white core, or Serafina white, um, gray core, and then I have from the supply pack has a nice variety of um, stone or um, grits and gray top coats. So that's what we're working with, an olive, because I just love a little bit of olive on the face and the ears. You might make kind of a brownie squirrel. I do have a little bit of this. I um, can't remember if this is the Moret or the sh Brown Shetland, um, but it's really very pretty. <sighs> the new, the new stuff. The new, the new stuff. Um, oh, someone's asking about the hair. We don't have any tutorials for anything. Um, we have the snow well, hair, just not the large one. The snow hair, not the large one. Yeah, can you guys see the little white ones? Yeah, we have the snow hair, which is the little white ones. The 
elephant's pretty big, I guess. All right, you guys ready to go nuts? I was watching the tutorial. Oh, <laughs> there are so many nut jokes. <laughs> so the first thing we want to do is cut our wires in half. I'm going to work on the face ace because it's a little tighter than the Zoli tool. I'm just going to cut one of my wires in half because I know I'm not making four squirrels any time soon. And you don't have to do this, but I'm going to try and pinch the ends over. I think I saw that someone was a first time felter maybe in the comments. Um, so just ask any questions because I don't usually go through the whole um, needle felting from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from, the, from the entire beginning. If you have tacky wrap and want to put a little bit on this wire, you know what I think is good that we didn't do in the tutorial is to throw a little bit of gray core on here before we put it on the tool just so that when we do wrap around the wire um, it already has a layer on it and it'll felt in better. So I'm going to work with about an 8 inch piece and this, this is not super chunky, so I'm just gonna only gonna split it in half. <laughs> and I'm going to wrap my wire. Um, I think when you're wrapping a wire by itself, it's easier to go from center out and center out. So I'm gonna work one way and then the other. little on the tight side on this. It doesn't have to be super skinny or anything. You could also just roll your wire instead of um, wrapping your the wire. Roll. The wire is just the uh, 22 gauge wrapped wire. Half of a 22 so, gauge. Half. So mm -hmm. pre-cut 22 or 18 inches, so it's a 9 inch wire. Yes. Yep, and 3 inches of the wire is going to be squirrel and um, six inches is going to be tail. It's a beautiful day here. It's like sunny and 70. So nice. Lovely. In fact, I just got home nice. from Fair Hill, and I'm going to be eating in your ear a little bit because I have not eaten. Okay. We will. I was going to say, what are you eating as I heard all of the, like... Well, I was getting mm -hmm. veggie straws and um, monster cheese. It's not really a great lunch. It's more of a snack, but... <laughs> Almost hot out, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. So glad you guys joined in today. I always look forward to coming here on a Saturday and doing this. Even when I'm not prepared. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I just thought it's just a little project, and then I realized that I didn't totally remember how to do it. So I'm just going to put this um, wrapped wire on my Zoli, on my face ace. If you don't have the face ace, you can use a pencil or the Zoli tool, the round side of the Zoli tool. And I would work with about 8 inch pieces of core. It's just easier to easier to wrap and you can break them down into thirds or halves it just depends like I said this isn't super chunky so um, if it were very chunky I would
break it down into quarters, probably. So far, you've only used gray core, yes? Yes. No, not true. Okay. Yeah. Nope, just core. We're just going to build out of core. Oh, my veggie straws are going to be crunchy. <laughs> I love so hungry. Um, so with this piece of core, I want to wrap the um, about three inches of the skinnier end of the tool. So I'm starting, this is going to be the squirrel's nose and then his body ends at three inches and then the rest is gonna be his little tail. So I'm just going down the tool to the end of the wire. I mean, the, yeah, the end of the wire and the tool and then I'm gonna angle back. And I gotta do this a couple of times. When do the nut jokes start? <laughs> I don't think, I think we just make this like, just one sheet, like we don't do a head and all that stuff, like if I remember right. So, but we do want, as we add a couple more pieces, we want it to get, stay skinny at the nose. Like don't keep adding to the nose. This is about, um, about a half an inch is as big as you want that. And then you want it to build towards the butt. So get a little bigger at the butt. So it's gonna be a little bit of a cone shape. Usually I'm like full of news, but I feel like I've s spilled all of the news. You have spilled all the news. <laughs> I'll talk to the internet already. You can only handle so much new news. Who? <laughs> Us as a Serafina. <laughs> Stop. Is that, is that what you're saying? I'm saying yes. Okay. We will cease. <laughs> No, I feel like we just did a little. We did a lot. We did a little. We did a now. we did a flurry. Yeah. Yes. So don't need like a week to breathe and then we'll yeah. be good. Yeah. Try not to let your cone shape travel, you know, past the three inches. You want to? I I I keep my fingers there so that I stay there. And you can also kind of crisscross your wrap on the butt. And that will tighten it in and keep it from, if you just keep going around, it's going to want to slide, slide down. I'm going to put one more piece on and I will show you this, this sheet. I just got an email. When you start working on the tail, could you, I'm just afraid I'm going to forget. So I'm telling you, um, could you try to address if you wanted to use locks as part of the tail, how you oh, would do that? Oh, sure. I think okay. so. That would be fun. Maybe I'll do that too. All right. One more piece all the way down. I, I'm having a little bit of a brain, like, lapse in terms of I'm looking at this. I'm like, what do I call this shape? It's like a, it's like a pod. giant pod though yeah so it's like I said it's about three inches on the tool and maybe half an inch wide here going to a little over an inch on the butt I can maybe even do one more I don't want it to be so tiny that like it's hard to work on Did I shame you out of your veggie straws because you really weren't that loud? No, there were only a couple in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> okay. Maybe you something out. Okay. Uh, Karen, you definitely want to start with core wool first. 
Ja. Oh, Paige is here. Oh, good. Paige can't wait to be in the studio with us again. Aww. We need to talk to Paige about the May class. <laughs> oh, Paige Snow? Who's here? Yes. Yeah. I did just talk to Paige, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, I just pulled my... I just pulled my tool out. Ooh. So now I have a spermazoa looking shape. Um, I did. Yeah, I will talk to you about that. Okay. Yeah. That's how most good things start. Yes, it is. The embryo stage. I'm stabbing the butt back in on itself so that it doesn't keep sliding. And then I'm just stabbing. Oh, we want to do that. Was it hard to slide it off the tool? No, no, no. Uh -uh. If it was difficult for someone to slide it off the tool, <laughs> what might they be doing wrong? Um, if they're not using a Serafina tool, maybe their tool has like a barb or something that's grabbing the wool. Lay it on. Yeah. I mean, it would take some seriously tight wrapping to not be able to slide it off the tool. Unless if you're using the face ace and you're going the wrong way, um, you need to slide it off the skinny way. Well, and trouble sliding it off may also mean unraveling, which would mean it's not quite correct. Yeah. Oh, Crisscrossed or tight yeah. enough. It's interesting. It's interesting. The wire can still wiggle around in there, so you have to be careful. They sat on it. Yeah. Nut flicks. That's funny. Um, if you have made the sleepy mouse, you're going to be familiar with this next step. We're going to stab this, and and people have a little bit of trouble with this, but you're going to stab it sleepy. Stab its little muzzle in. So, actually, you know what? Now that I'm doing this on the Zoli tool, I mean on the face ace, the Zoli tool is good because it gives, like, this is a little bit tight. The face ace is tighter, so it's a little harder to stab this. Oh, uh, that's a... Um, okay, but I'm going to put it down, and I'm going to angle and stab a vertical line. Let me do this and then show you guys. And this vertical line is his muzzle. <laughs> so funny, this step. Do you need to sign in with the new thing so you're not So I just stabbed a vert. Oh, it's going to be hard for them to see a vertical line into the end of the nose. Someone's using a dowel. Yes, sanding it would help. Yeah. All right, Judy, you're on it with the jokes. Somehow I'm like not Milo on this in this format. No, you're Kyla. I know. <laughs> well, then I don't do jokes. It's just funny that I like don't even. You're not in not your. On my radar. You're not in your persona. Mm. I did just put. Um, Kyla helped me today. Um, we updated the website with the online options. So on the website under calendar and workshops, there's now an online workshop section, and it has everything um, a little bit more clearly explained and laid out to make um, registering for online classes easier. Um, I added a dragon. I added some availability. I added a couple more. There's Right now there's three sort of core classes, um, armatures, fiber focus, and pricing and selling. So I added a few more of those. Um, I have a couple of ideas for a few more core classes. And then I also will add um, some summer camp adult camp type of stuff um, for probably more July and August because I have the two workshops in, uh, in June now, May and June. All right, we need to build up the tail just a little bit more. We just have this one layer on it. So I'm going to take another 8-inch piece, split it in half, 
and wrap the tail. I'm going from the body to the end. You could go either way. I'm trying to go nice and slow. Hopefully I'm not just ditching everybody. Someone's asking when the workshops start. They're all kind of sort of different, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, you just got to go look at the, <clears throat> at the schedule. funny so all of this gets stabbed quite a bit so if you don't have to stab anything um, then you don't have to stab anything put a little bit more this base of the tail is a little wimpy so I'm just building up the end of the tail it's closer to the body a little bit We had a good fiber focus class last night. Everybody was, it was very engaging and it was fun. They asked a lot of questions and I, I really felt like I was, you know, had stuff to share and it was cool. Okay. Yeah. It's so interesting. We've always hesitated online classes just because in person is. Well, I gotta tell you, I, yeah, I really it haven't. Be better because you can be hands on, but this has obviously forced. It has. Out online and it's neat that it's working so well. Well, but Kyla, I have not done any needle felting yet. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so okay. so. And I don't know, I still don't know that I can. I feel like, you know what I think would do pretty well would be something like the 2D rooster overhead. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and you'd need to get over the shoulder angle. Yes, yes. Um, so right now, the types of courses are either self, you know, the people, the participants will work a lot on their own. Um, like we're going to, kind of get the format, make the armature together, maybe make some components together, you know, but they will be doing right. the work on their own. Um, and, or, or the core classes are more like a kind of theoretical lecture type um, stuff. Okay. So I want to make, um, build up his little head a little bit and I'm really hoping that you guys either watch the tutorial <laughs> I've done this before because like zero familiarity is um you know I'm just not uh teaching quite as for beginner, beginners quite as thoroughly as I do when I when we make a tutorial okay using the core I'm going to lay out Across, um, let me just take a nice big, let's see, I'm going to take a nice like three inch piece of gray core and going side to horizontally on my felting surface, I'm going to make a nice two inch, two inch square of core. I just restacked it so that it's, so that it's square as wide as it is tall. And what this piece is going to be is um, it's going to go the point. We're going to make a triangle. The point is going to go at the end of the nose to make the little squirrel nose. And then the back of it is going to come to the back of the head to kind of, you know, build up the back of the head. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a bad idea for me too to type in baby squirrel. You can even put sleeping. And go to images. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> One has a tiny little tooth. Oh, I've got a pretty good image that I like. We didn't do arms. We could do little arms if we 
hold out here. And then on this two inch chunk of four that's going horizontally, I'm going to stab a center line. And then I'm going to stab um, a triangle that I want to go from a point to obviously to about two inches wide or about an inch and a half, maybe wide at the bottom. Don't make your point right up against the tippy top of your fiber because then when you fold your sides in, your point is going to be like super thin and, and, and paper thin. We don't want that. We want a little bit of bulk at the point. So start your point back about a half an inch um, from the end of your fiber and then draw your triangle. People would like to see your arms. See my, do the arms? Yes. We can do that. There yeah. is interest. Yeah. All right. So now I have a little bit of fiber at the tip of the triangle. I'm just going to roll that back in. And then I'm going to fold the edges over and just stab all over a little bit. Uh-oh, Lee's calling me. She's calling? Yeah. Does she not know she's going to lie? No. All right, and then before too long, you need to pick your shape up off of your felting surface so that um, it doesn't get stuck. But there's my, my little triangle. I don't know why I don't tone that with top coat colors. Do we do it again? Oh, well, we're just going with it. Do you plan on adding additional armature classes? Yes, there should be one. I thought I had all three available right now. Okay. Um, but maybe I don't. Maybe I need to add another one. All right, does everybody have their triangle? Nice thick core triangle. Do you have your little mouth line, your little muzzle line? So you want to know what's the top of your squirrel and what's the bottom of your squirrel. And my shapes usually seem to have kind of an arched side and a flat side. Um, so I make that, since we want them to be curled up, I make the um, arched side the back. I'm going to stab the tip of my triangle at the base of the nose and a little bit over the forehead. And I have quite a bit of, I don't need quite all this fiber, so I'm pulling off about a quarter of it. And then the rest of it, I want to push forward and make like a little square head. It's so hard to describe this stuff without being a little closer. In the tutorial, you did add a little top. Yeah, I think I did too, yeah. I just wonder why I didn't put it onto this piece, you know. And sometimes I don't want my triangle to be quite so defined, so I'm just kind of fuzzing it out a little bit with my fingers. I want this to not look like, you know, ultimately it needs to look all... Um, Homogenous, you don't want to look like one like piece slapped on top of another. All right, so that will be my squirrel's little nose. And this all is going to get more work, but we just needed to get a little bit more of a, a head shape on there. Oh, my butt. Well, I guess once he gets his thighs on, he'll be a bit, his butt will be bigger. You added the coloring later. Somebody just watched the tutorial. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs>
Hi, Robin. Yelling in head. <laughs> There's people lost on Facebook trying to find us. Did my link not go? I just link. No, it's there. Okay. Are they on Fanfare? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> it's always a little confusion. Hmm. All right. Do you guys have your triangle on your head? It never does. That's the whole point of it. Sorry for my side conversation. That's okay. Just, I was going to do the next step, but I don't want to like keep lurching forward. If The next step's easy. It just takes a little time. And we're going to take the off-white pour, or if you have Serafina white, that's fine. And we're going to pull sections of it and go with the fringy edges off. Um, oh no, we need to make the little chin first. This I folded in my fingers, I think. Because we don't People need it. People are saying yes, I assume they're yeah. ready. Yes. Okay. We, um, we don't need a big thick chin because it's already got quite a little muzzle going on here. So I have a, um, like an inch square of pour wool. And you can do it on the felting surface or you can do it in your hands. But you just want to make a tiny, tiny ghost. You just want to fold almost like making the triangle, except it's small and it has a little bit of a rounded, um, rounded edge. And we'll put that on. I'll show you where it goes in one second. It goes, you still want to have a muzzle. You might have to make a little extra muzzle. It's like a little wimpy. His face looks a little wimpy. Eating some nuts right now. I think I called Lee the last time she was live. What? I think I called Lee the last time she was live, not knowing that she no, was live. Fun. Yeah. Oh, good. Lots of yeses. Okay, after the chin is on with sort of one and a half inch tufts of off-white pour, or you're going to pull it off and see, you know, like that's a little bit much. I'll probably break it down. I want it to go across my squirrel body and then the fringe just sticking off on the sides. I'll show you. And I'm so I'm stabbing the belly and I'm letting the fringe to stick off of each side. <laughs> like that. So it's just called me. Oh, good. <laughs> so I'm gonna get her butt on here. Yes, Lee and Kyla and I would be at uh, Sheep and Wool this weekend. We would be busy, busy right now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go all the way down the tail bone with with pieces of off-white core going across. Don't go along the tail. All the fringe has to stick out to the sides because that's what makes them fuzzy and cute. So whether you're doing locks or not, you'd still do that sideways? Yes. Or like on the underside? Yes. Um, I, 
I have some really pretty locks. I'll go grab, I'll get my off-white core on here and I'll go grab my locks and that'll give everybody some time. I'm not trying to assume that I'm faster than everybody. <laughs> but usually... You pretty much always are. I do have a little bit of, I do have a little bit of secret news. <laughs> it's about, it's about the next felt along. Well, it's not about the mermaid. It's about what's after the mermaid. Oh, that's yes. secret news to me. Yes. It's brand new news. Inspired by the beautiful red mulberry silk that came in. You know what that means? Is it yes. Then yeah. <laughs> I'll tell when I come back. I gotta keep everybody excited about what's coming up. I'm gonna go get my locks. Maybe I'll tell while you're gone. <laughs> I would never steal the thunder. I mean, this is just so cool because we have so much to do and we're tackling some new things, we're refreshing some old things, we're spending some time together, it's inspiring new ideas, hopefully maybe even there's new friendships. If anybody gets married because of Serafina, I want to know. <laughs> What? We gotta get them. We gotta get the man filters. There's a couple. I think they lie low. <laughs> no, I would. <laughs> You're back. I'm pretty sure everyone's waiting. I know, right? This is what it looks like right now. What, when I was gone? Yeah, I did. Kevin's here. Kevin Noble. We got one guy. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. There's possibly a lot of potential. There's a lot of potential. <laughs> oh, my gosh. These are amazing. These are going to be a pain for me to work with, though. Maybe I should go get something that's less amazing. These are... Um, sorry, I have to stick my face in it, always. Um, uh, Wensleydale... Thank you, Robin. That was very sweet. Wensleydale lamb. So I'm not going to use that because they're 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 super silky and and really um, really little, and so it would take me too long um, to sort that out. But I do have something else that I will get the next time. I think everybody needs a little catching up. Okay. Um. So. It's, it is no secret that we have been working on a very bright and beautiful line of colors designed um, for flowers and really designed for wet felting. Um, our flower tutorial is the first part wet felted and the structure needle felted. So um, I think they'll be ready by the time we're done the mermaids. So that's like super exciting. And that's what I think we should do together. Is we need them done a little bit before that. Yes. So people have time to... Yes. And so revisit revisit the flower tutorial, you know? <laughs> it's a good time for it. You're right, Pat. Um, okay. Um, we need thighs. I think I did the thighs next. So with um, about an eight inch piece of gray, 
This is a little, I, it, you know, the, the size of the wool is a little bit hard. So what I'm going to do is wrap one and show you. And if you have too much fiber, just take, um, just take some off. And Azuli tool is good because it's going to give us that nice um, one inch, one inch square. So I'm going to wrap my fiber just around, just in that one inch area. So that was three. This is going to be the right size piece. I went around about four times. Let me make another one just to, just to confirm. So I want to make two of these. So I'm going around one, two. I'm not traveling very much. Like the width of the fiber is three, yeah, four. So I have two, um, two squares. And then you slide them off of the tool. And then if you have like a more tapered side, which I just kind of always end up with my shapes with a more blunt side and a more tapered side, this is their thigh. So it's going to go on the back of the body, um, you know, just in front of the tail on the body. And you want the tapered side to go over the back. Let me get one on and I'll show you. And the sort of more blunt side is where their foot's gonna go. You know, with this little body, we don't totally have room for arms, but we can do little arms. Okay, so it goes on the side of the body, the tapered part just blending over the back, and the other side, it's kind of against the body. It's not like totally sticking off. Um, but don't felt it because we're going to felt a foot right there. Let me get the other one on and maybe it'll. Oh yeah, sheep and wool is. There's, um, there's an online marketplace for sheep and wool, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm sure some vendors are using, you know, coupons and stuff. are crazy right now. This does not look cute right now. <laughs> Question about the uh, face days. Mm -hmm. You're working all on the face days, right? Um, I just use the Zoli tool for the thighs. Okay. And then a question from Kevin. If wrapping on the Zoli tool or the face days, am I wrapping too tight if the middle of my wrapping comes out when I pull it off the tool? I really don't think you can wrap too tightly on the tool. I think um, it, when you grab it to slide it off, just make sure that, you know, if your shape is here, that you're grabbing it from the back end, that you have the whole thing. In other words, have you ever um, cooked a marshmallow over the campfire and then it's all toasted? If you just grab the outside and pull, the toasted part comes off. This is a new analogy. <laughs> so, and the sticky part stays on. So just make sure you're grabbing it from behind and sliding and it should all come off together. And you, yeah. Um, you don't always crisscross. In this case, I did not crisscross. I just, um, but if your shape like fell apart, just make another one. 
right quick. Don't try to, don't try to, I'm not, I, I rarely try to salvage something that like just isn't, you know, didn't work. Sometimes you can, depending on if you've stabbed it or not. But. Mm. All right, I feel like if we make arms, we're going to make them on the face ace. And we're going to put the top coat right on it. And we're going to make the feet on the face ace. Little arms. Hmm. All right. Is, for, yeah. Is there a gap? On the back between the sides. Mine just the two I know it's hard to see gray on gray. The two shapes, they just taper um and they just overlap or touch each other. And then the other side of it is just kind of on that white, that off white fluff. There it is from underneath. What we're making is like basically like the hip. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the face ace, you can use a pencil or the Zuli tool. Okay, arms, I'm going to use a four inch piece of core. Are Split. you all in core still? Have you used any top yet? Nope. And I split it in half, but I'm like stretching it out because it was a little kind of chunky feeling. But again, we can go by sort of the size that you're wrapping, not necessarily the, you know, the piece of wool that you start with. And I haven't made arms before, but I think we're just going to wrap um, like this... Um, Two inches on the face ace, sort of two inches in. So the, the third and fourth area on the face ace. So um, in order to have a nice consistent shape when you slide it off, when you're wrapping on a, on a tool like these, you want to go from one end of your shape distance out and back. Because if you only wrap one way, then the wool is not overlapping itself and locking itself down. And so if you only wrap in one direction and then slide it off, it's just, it's just going to come apart, just going to unroll. So if you want to watch, I'm wrapping from the one, two, three, fourth dot to the second dot. And then I'm going to turn around and go back to the fourth dot. So this is a tapered tool, so um, it does have a little bit of taper to it. And because whenever you start at one end, go up and go back, that, that end you started on is going to be wider because you, you ended up wrapping more fiber there. Now, before I slide this off, I'm going to put a little bit of top coat on it. And... Oh my gosh, we have so many options. Um, we have almond, we have shiitake, we have, I have this, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Uh, you could use one of your grays. Um, I'm thinking maybe more like if you're using the kit, the, um, the lighter warm gray, not the darker to, um, cold gray. I would use this as, um, as my squirrel is this almond? I'm like questioning my, um, my verbiage right now. Well, I'll just, I know I'll just use this so that I'm using the same thing as everybody else. I'm just going to take a little three inch section of it 
split it in half so it's a very small amount and I'm going to cover the shape that I just wrapped by wrapping. Oh, I kind of like that. Um, it didn't quite go all the way, but I kind of like that he's a little bit lighter on his foot. Or maybe I'll put a little bit of, um, of the brown um, olive down there. Let me get this going here and then I'll, when you slide it off, you want to stab it sort of flat-ish, I think. Just a little bit. So there's my sheet. Should be about two inches. And before I stab that on, I'm going to go ahead and make the other one so that I know I make them the same. So the top coat is really just for color. It's not adding a ton of, you know, more bulk. Stab your, um, the end of his little hand a little bit back in on itself too, so that it doesn't keep, um, so it doesn't pull, pull off. So you can see the angle of my needles as I stab at about 45 degrees. So that stabs the end back in on itself. Now, if you have them pretty stabbed and you don't want to do this before it's stabbed, you can roll them in your hands a little bit, but just be careful because it will make it longer. So you don't want to do it too much, but it can just kind of smooth things out a little bit. All right, and then his little arms, same thing that <laughs> his arms are hugely out of proportion. Um, maybe I want to give him a tiny white paw with, uh, with a little bit of off-white stab in it. Just stabbing a little area of the in on one side. That's cute. That kind of makes it look a little bit more like a hand instead of like just like a gigantic worm <laughs> coming off of the body. Okay. So I gave him little little white paws. I feel like it's a little much, um, like my shape is a little bit big. So if I had a seam ripper, that would be awesome, but I don't. So I'm going to use these scissors and just come at the end a little bit, um, take some of this off. Pare it down a bit. I love that you don't have a seam ripper. I know, we had like a whole set of tools for me here. I'm <laughs> sure it might be here. I actually did clean up a little bit today. It was... I was going to say, is it buried in fiber? No, it was, it was way out of control in here. After I my... understand. You've seen my yes. table. Yes. All right, so we need to get his arms on... I feel like the arms, we're doing the arms, but I feel like they're a little, it's going to be okay. 
the, the design was not designed for arms. So they seem a little excess to me because the design is pretty small. It's teeny tiny and curled up. But make sure you're not putting the arms on the head. Make sure you've got the <laughs> arms back where arms are supposed to be. I'll show you mine in one second. You know, kind of, I'm just kind of tweaking the thighs back just a little bit so that he actually does have some sort Space. of belly. <laughs> yeah, instead of just all legs. So the arms, are you felting? I am, I'm making an <laughs> egg. <laughs> so the arms, um, if they're like way too long, you take some off the back end. So you decide how big the arm is. You know what I mean? Like just because you made a shape doesn't mean you have to live with it. So if you need to take a little bit off, that's what you do. All right, it's foot time. The world is boss. That's right. We're going to make the feet the same way. Um, I'm going to use the uh, wider end of the face ace. I'm going to wrap kind of in between the dot and the logo there. I'll start with a four inch um, piece of fiber, split in half, stretch it out. Are you using the face ace for your eggs? It makes great eggs. I am. They are yeah. perfect. Do you want some aqua? Did you steal some aqua? I did not steal aqua. But I'm using the blue moon, which nice. is lovely. All right, so I want this to be about an inch, inch and a half. I should have started at the other end. It's amazing how sometimes if you wrap something, it will not come and done. Okay, but that did. Okay, so I want to wrap. It's a little awkward, but because no, that that'll work. It's okay. It's okay that the the narrow side is thicker. Don't mind me. Just wrap it inch and half at the end of the tool, and then put your um. Put your gray, just like the other one, a little bit of coloring on top of it. I'm doing this with slightly different than the tutorial. The wider, the wider end is going to be your toes. Okay. The narrower end is going to be your heel. So if I want to use a little bit of this brown at the end of the foot, like I did on the hands, the olive, then I'm putting it at the wider, near the logo, at the wider end of my shape. Phew, it's complicated. And then you can slide this off the wrong way. It, it will, it should come off. But then you wanna stab this flat um, and you wanna stab a little bit of off-white onto the base of the foot. Oh, that's my squirrel. I was trying to pull off-white chunky curl off my, off, well, off-white chunky core off my squirrel. So while you're stabbing it flat, you can be stabbing your core wall on the base kind of the of foot. Kind of ignore the mention of donuts. Oh. I know. There was like an entire week that I thought people were carrying around donuts. <laughs> like every time Talbot walked in with a box, I was like, he's got donuts. Donuts are my thing. Oh, people can hear me stabbing. That's impressive. Phone yes. To camera, to live. Yes. That's why I was a little concerned about the, <laughs> about the, um, the veggie sticks. But it, it worked out fine. Oh, it could have been bad. They're very noisy. I didn't eat many. What? <clears throat> I lost wool. 
Oh well, I'm going to imagine that this is my piece. Maybe it is. Well, make it your piece. I'm making it my piece. Got my gray core, got my gray top coat, and my little bit of olive. I feel like this olive is not quite right. Is it actually olive? Maybe it's not. But what would it be? <laughs> um, grizzly? No, I think no. it's olive. I, I remember looking at the recipe. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, this one's prettier than the other one. Can you have one foot more prominent than the other? Sure. They always end up, even if you don't want to, they end up perfect. I'm done stamping. I just had to finish eggs. Yeah. I think it's fun to have stuff, you know, you can put these on however however you want. Um, I think in the tutorial, I took my, you have a t little bit of really dark gray, and I made little, just roll it in your fingers, and make little lines for his little toes. I'll make one and then show it. So the way we put these together, you're really looking at the bottom of the feet. That's why we do the off-white step, because it's cute. I hope you guys have some music going on at home. So I just rolled that darker gray in my fingers and made little lines to be little toes. There's someone asking about puppet tips. Ooh. Where's Milo? She's trying to make a dragon puppet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've made quite a few puppets, actually, even though you've only seen... Milo and Ferris. Cute, but... Thank you. It's better to start with the middle one. And then do your outer two. Is there any chance it's vine? Somebody suggested that. No, it's more brown than vine. I should get up and go get a bat of olive. And I will while you guys get your feet going, because I have to get those other locks anyway. Alright, one foot, maybe a little cuter than the other. And then you can kind of make a heel, I guess. You don't want to stab it too, too much. And then this kind of nestles onto the, the base of that thigh. But a little bit more top coat is what's really, it's a little tricky to get on because the base of the thigh is mushy and your, your foot's pretty well felted and it's not a, my usual type of construction, um, <laughs> but theirs is like big foot on. So um, you guys can get these attached and I will get my other locks. 
and check out your feet could go like they could go out to each side they could go off to one side they could be pigeon they could both be angled in just don't don't stab yourself when you put these feet on Olive. Just not, it's just not olive the way I remembered it. I'll figure it out. Those are only slightly going to be easier, but I will. Okay, let's work on the face just a little bit and then it's top coat time. I feel like, I feel like I want just two really very small muzzle pieces. Um, and I don't think I did that in the, um, in the tutorial, but I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it out of the olive. Kind of like we made the chin. Um, no, this is too. I think this is too. No, it'll be okay. Maybe I'll mix a little, a little bit of gray in there. I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix a little bit of gray core in it. I'm mixing olive and gray core in my in my hand. And it, this is teeny tiny, like I really just want two little, um, tiny little ghosts, just like we did the chin. Even smaller than the chin. I'm mean, using trying to get down to like a, a three quarter inch square of wool. because my little gray muzzle just isn't quite, it's not quite enough. I'll hold it up. And I want that shape to just overlap the chin just a little bit. So just putting that brown, um, little ghost shape, let me see if I'm holding it up here. On the side there. So we need two of those, they meet in the middle. maybe would have been but this is like I feel like I feel like this is involved for some reason maybe, well that's maybe. part of the arms and the feet and yeah. all of that like like maybe I should have been over the shoulder I don't know I feel like I'm all right so now okay that looks better to me now he's got a little a little more meat on his muzzle he's cute Cutie pie. I think I want to do ears and then top coat. 
ears. I just make little triangles. It would be fun to give them a little like tuft. You know, the red squirrels have those little tufts out of their ears. So using, let me use like an inch square of olive. I'm really like breaking it down so that I, I'm restacking it into the shortest staple length possible. I might even be breaking the fiber a little bit. Um, and then maybe a little bit of gray. Will we still be going live after Corona? I assume after we're all done being quarantined. Yeah. Um, I, it, it that's a good question. I just, I just don't know. Like I, I'm really enjoying this. I'm reaching more people. Um, I used to do workshops in here with eight people pretty much every other Saturday. So, um, you know, the Saturday thing is questionable, but do I want to go back to doing that? You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I have little squares. I'm gonna I'm gonna try the little tough idea. I don't know how it's gonna look. I'm just gonna stick a little fiber vertically out of my <laughs> out of my triangle. Um, I think I would do it. You know, maybe if it's not every weekend, I would still like to do it. Um, we may. And, I mean, you can do whatever to join in with you on a regular basis. I would say probably not every Saturday afternoon in the middle of the afternoon. Oh yeah, no, like, like if, switching some times up. Yeah, like if my kids are back in school right now and our Saturdays feel a lot like all the other days, but right. typically, typically I'm not even necessarily like home, right, or around. Exactly. I have a lot more freedom with my time these days. <laughs> Kyla doesn't work on Saturdays, is what she said. <laughs> okay, all I've done here is I'm sorry, I sort of stopped talking. Um, I I made a I made little triangles, kind of like we did the nose, except this is my square, I mean my ear, and I'm gonna stab it flat. And I feel like I do want a little bit of um off white in the center of the ear. So I'm just going to put a little off-white in there. I think that'll um, kind of like his feet, you know, just cute little detail. So these are little triangles with my, my fiber sticking out of the top and a little white in the center. And the punch tool is great on an ear because you just really felt the snot out of it. Get it flat. Oh, felt the snot. <laughs> and then what do these little ears want to do? Let's see. I'm looking at my reference picture. Okay. So they want to get pinched a little bit at the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to stab it together at the bottom a little bit. In other words, I'm pinching it or folding it. And then I'm going to fan the end out. And I'm going to put it on the back of the head facing the side. They don't face forward. So all the fringe is your friend for felting on your, your pieces.
I think if I were to predict which is a dangerous thing to do um, well maybe predicting isn't dangerous planning, planning is dangerous um, I would like to keep doing um, the online um, instruction particularly and Um, and this once in a while, I would. I really like it. Work. I I would I would still do workshops here. If I'm I'm enjoying the break. <laughs> like it, it's hard. It's just it's well, a it's not like you're, Yeah, it's not like you're not teaching. Yeah, no, but either. it's like yeah. if you totally didn't have the engagement, I think you'd really miss it. Yes. It's just, it's different. Yeah, it's different. It's intense. All right, so now he's looking kind of like a bat. Ooh. What? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's his little nose? It's a little pink. A little brown over the nose. All right, now I need to put some top coat color kind of over the top of the head. I like the brown-gray combo that's on his muzzle. Um, the olive and the gray core I'm going to mix together for the tip of his nose. And then I'm going to get darker as I go back um, with, the, um, with the almond. I keep calling this almond. I'm pretty sure... Did anybody have anything to say about the flowers? I didn't see or hear. Uh, yes, there was some flower excitement. Okay, good. I think it's muted. So I'm laying the fiber horizontally across the nose. I'm redefining the little nose um, shape. And then I'm going to lay more fiber horizontally across the back of the head. So now over the bridge of the nose, around the cheek area, I'm using my gray. You have felt in some flower petals. Have you put them together yet? No. Just okay. sitting there. This guy's a little tank. <laughs> he is. He's like getting ready to go do some damage somewhere on some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Judy about the uh, nut jokes. Judy telling some nut jokes? Well, she said be careful what you Google, because there's a lot of inappropriate jokes out there, which I said I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. You are an experienced joke Googler. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at my reference picture... Kind of tweak in my facial features, put my top coat on, probably taking this a little too seriously in terms of trying to get everything super awesome. Well, you are nice. <laughs> you know, no pressure. Uh, okay. Stop in oh, there. A, a sumo squirrel, <laughs> someone said. It does, because of the big arms. 
And then, I, I don't even know. I think, I feel like this one I have to get, I have to get it smaller. It is out of control. So funny. All right. Let's see what we got here now. Maybe I need to do them both. I think I just made the arms too big. Which I apologize means everybody <laughs> made the arms too big. Maybe not. Maybe you guys have more forward vision than I did. That makes me happier. Yes, that's better. All right, you got to go too. Sorry, squirrel. It does get to a point where you kind of feel weird ripping parts off of them, stabbing them and stuff. So the flowers will be in several weeks. Several weeks, because I, I think the mermaid's going to take three. Okay. I feel like our attendance is going to dwindle as the mermaid goes on. We'll see. Not that it matters as long as everybody's happy. Okay, top coat over the back, just like I did over the head. I'm gonna put a little brown. And then I'm gonna put some grays. I'm putting my olive, and I'm letting the fringe blend over the um, thigh and arm pieces. That's kind of bringing it together, in other words. Covering all the seams of the, you know, arms and legs being attached. And the fringe also, I'm felting a little bit kind of into the side of the foot so that it helps hold the foot on better. And then he's brown right now, but I want to make him more gray. So I'm going to put a gray layer on. Try and get the fringe to look the same on both sides. Fringe is your like blending friend. Fringe hides all kind of stuff. Mermaids start next week. Yeah. Yeah. So the mermaid, it's going to be interesting. You know what else starts next week? Is horses. And I'm, oh my. I know. I don't have a horse. I. <laughs> some stuff to do. I got some stuff to do. Well, so then next week you're hoping to make the armature. Next week, I think I'm going to make, I was going to be like, let's make the armature and wet felt, but I think that's too much. Let's make the armature. You know, I can help with the fingers. I have a new um, hand technique. Like, so I have a new hand technique. So like all that stuff, that's going to take some time, you know? Right. Um, and then... The wet next, itself. the wet felting, let's put off until the following week. So the following week will just be the wet felting. Plus it'll be hard for me to set both things up. So then the wet felting will be its own thing. And then in between, everybody can work on fingers and faces and, you know, wrapping. And then on the third week, we will put the tails on. And that's it. And maybe, maybe I can do a, um, a, a face demo but we you know we have we do videos have the like good, that. yeah with the fee face yeah okay we need a little off white um around the eyeball so i just kind of break it down until it's a nice little sort of half inch size poof you could make this a shape but i'm just stabbing in fluff 
But like you could make a little ball or, you know. Just so you know, people really like to see you work and make changes and work through problems and oh, nice. all of that. Because yeah. people, I think it shows people, um, someone saying it gives more confidence that I can make mistakes and recover. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The perfect tutorial is not as enriching. Ooh, yeah. Good. Good to hear. And Thank I, you. you actually learn by watching you troubleshoot and tweak. So keep screwing up. People okay. love it. Okay, great. Oh, <laughs> oh, I mess up all the time. Like, it is not fine. No, you see, it's starting to look like something. He's <laughs> like, he's like an old man, like... He's a sleepy old man squirrel, <laughs> like with his ear hair, and I don't know what's going on here. I feel I did make a squirrel tail with locks. I don't totally yeah. remember how I did it, but um, we'll try. The little sleepy eye is very cute. Yeah. We really went through a sleepy baby phase. We kind of <laughs> wanted the sleepy baby everything. I don't know that we quite have enough, but <laughs> Jennifer's gonna... there are still more sleepy baby things. We want their little baby noses are like nice and blunt. You know, we want that little. I don't know what's something about my baby squirrel is not baby like. <laughs> I think it's his nose. He looks like an old man. So we were talking about um, symmetry last night in the course, and I was explaining why your faces are not symmetrical. Because um, you know they aren't. <laughs> and um, I think one of the projects I want to put together for the summer like as a little sort of beginner bundle of the armatures the fiber focus and then um, kind of like troubleshooting like just you know shapes and tools and um, a couple of like one course would just be not random topics but like I guess what I'm trying to say is the things that I have heard and or observed all condensed. So just very common questions, um, maybe misdirections or trouble areas. Um, and then we also talked about a um, tiny techniques course. So wow. things like eyes, fingers, um, you know, just focusing on some of those more detail-oriented aspects of projects. Um, so it'll be fun. There'll be lots of good, good stuff. So now, as I'm stabbing, I'm kind of, this is where with the sleepy mice and all the sleepies, you've got to start thinking of the, of the curl, of the of the rounded shape. If you just keep stabbing not in the rounded shape, it's gonna end up not rounded. So you have to start to squeeze it together, you know, and then directionally stab it round. Now before I get too far, we're gonna work on the tail. So underneath, I took a little note here. Um, I did the stone on the back of the tail I think what I would do is the stone, I don't think I want to do locks. You could do locks, oh these are, these are even worse, okay. They're not bad locks, they're just <laughs> not good for this project. Um, you could do your locks coming out the sides. So, for example, I'm not, I'm not going to do locks today. It's going to take me too long because they all need to be kind of prepared. But, um, 
I can't. It's too, it's just way too crazy. Let me find, I'm going to grab some colorful locks just to show, just to demonstrate. And if you have some nice locks that are perfect for this, I would take some, um, you could comb out the end. This happens to be very open and loose, but if it weren't, I would take a little comb, go like that. And then I would orient them kind of angled 45, maybe start from the base and work your way up. Um, maybe leave the bottom just off white and do these on the the back of the squirrel on the back of the tail and has so have all your um, all your ends over the tailbone all your locks coming out the side and then shingle a top coat over the end of the locks to sort of lock them all in and down um, in the tutorial, we took our grits or whatever color this is, and we went on the bottom of the tail. So shingling is the fringe points off. You felt the center one third directly, just direct into the core wool and the spine of the tail that's already there. And then you fold one third over and felt that down. And then we're going to do that again. So this time I'm working with like, well, this is the staple length of the fiber. It's about five inches long. And I'm working with the width of the roving. So the fringe points down, covers that last fold felt the center one third. I'm probably going to have about three of these on the back of this tail. And then someone asked how firm you've actually felted the squirrel. It's like my arm, which is like rock hard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's mush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So to cover the last fold, I can just take a little bit of off white. Well, maybe it's going to be tucked up. It's going to be tucked up under these feet and he's going to be curled up. And it kind of looks like his old butt. So I don't, I don't need to cover it. All right. So now we have this shingling on the bottom of the tail. And now we're gonna do it on the back of the tail. And I'm gonna use almond. And the darker gray. Oh wait, no, what did I do? I think I did nice and poofy. Let's do, uh, do we do this again? stone again on the back. We just do stone and almond. I feel like I did a third stripe in the tutorial, but I'm running out of stain. You guys should see Kyla's nests. They're so pretty. You gotta put three eggs in your nest, Kyla. I know, sometimes only two fit. Mm. Like three feels very- Too jammed up. Too jammed up when I go wild on my, on my locks. You do the top and the bottom. Yes. Yeah, we did the bottom already. 
Yeah, so you're doing the and top. I'm doing the top. <clears throat> so I'm doing three passes of shingles up the on the top. And then I kind of like fan them out to the side a little bit and then do the gray like really just on the tailbone up the middle to get some of that um, pretty top coat fiber sort of moving out towards the sides and then just do the gray up the middle. The person who asked how firmly you stabbed is a massage therapist and oh. they can look at the tension in your forearms and get a good guess. <laughs> nice. I stuck on massage therapist, which sounds really nice. Oh my gosh, I really miss, I really, really miss. I mean, I didn't get massages that often, but just, I guess the fact, just knowing that I can't makes yeah. me yeah. <laughs> makes me really miss it even more. I'm heading with that. Uh oh. Uh oh, what did Kevin say? I missed I missed the funny. He said, Have you done a sleeping chinchilla? <laughs> I'm kind of like that. Oh, see, you invented something. Have not made a chinchilla. So funny. One of my college friends had a chinchilla illegally. Ooh. I mean, because we were in college. Like on campus? In, in the dorm room, yeah. <laughs> just don't, I don't, so I don't know if it's because of that, but so just the word chinchilla always kind of makes me giggle. I think it's funny. There's so much you could do, it, you know, with, even just with this simple project, like, to get the locks and the colors. And... <laughs> he looks like he's been boxing at too young of an age. Gosh, I have not made one of these in a really long time. My off-white core that was underneath, I'm just kind of, you know, stabbing it in now if it had some funky edges coming out. I There's a lot of fiber in this kit. Oh, I guess it does make four. Now everybody's going to say chinchilla to make you giggle. <laughs> chinchilla! <laughs> It's because I see Brian's face and him saying, talking about his chinchilla. <laughs> I, I, think, I feel like I had like way too much fun in college. Like it was like, it wasn't quite right. Like I had some guilt. <laughs> All right. Now where the tail meets the butt, it looks a little, too severe, so I'm going to put a little top coat across there. Oh, the tail makes it all better. Yes. I want this fluff tail to have a little nap in a tree. I 
I do have my U-line relaxation station. <laughs> <laughs> we get, we order so much that we get some free stuff and there's these zero gravity tears and they're crazy comfortable. And then the other thing that we got was a, um, Blanket. The cozy blanket. And so I've got it in my backyard. I think it's I think cute. It's hilarious that you call it your Uline relaxation station. <laughs> yeah. I think it's cute kind of to make your ears like a little sleepy, like kind of like, like they're not alert, they're sort of like relaxed. And then I think it's important to get a little line maybe in the nose because their nose is pretty distinct. And you know what would be super cute and I don't have in the kit would be a little bit of pink on the nose. Oh. So if you have some, I think that is going to set your sleepy squirrel apart yes, from, from all, all the rest. Us. I loved the snails. Like, the snails just really pleasantly surprised me. How many people made them, how awesome they were. Um, that was a good redo. So for the line, you just took a little bit of dark. I'm using the dark gray. I'm going to turn around and show you. You could define the mouth as well, but I really just did um, did the nose. And then, Someone's saying if you're making gray swirls, are you going to do red? You could use like a chestnut and go a little redder yes for a red squirrel oh yeah like i had this um oh cute this more out and it's it's a it's a pretty red brown i mean it's not red red you could use uh buck might be too yellow um chestnut top coat is a nice mm -hmm. red it's a little wiry but that should be okay for this project um, I like my little squirrel. It's something. It was something about his nose is really big. It Aww. looks like sleeping Vicky Rourke. <laughs> I'm calling them done. He's super cute. Yeah. Yeah, it has been a long time. Milo thinks it's been too long, too, since I have not br been bringing them to work. It's so weird. It's like, Aww. I know. I don't know why. Just, I don't know why. It just doesn't feel right for some reason. They would love to come to work. Well, the day I had to stop by and Oliver was with me, he jumped out and like went to the door, but I called him back to the car and he looked so sad. Like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, they're no. like, they're all confused. Here. Yeah. The dogs love work. Yes. So do we, for that matter. Yes, I miss everybody. Very much. Marsh is here today, dyeing some fiber art bundles. Oh, excellent. Um, which is awesome. And, um, so, all right, everybody, can't wait to see your squirrels. I'm going to take my picture. I think he looks really cute now. I'm happy with the arms since I made him a little, little smaller. smaller. Yeah. <laughs> I really like his, um, his tail, these kind of, they kind of need to be seen from all angles because their, their tail is so, so cool. But I have um, a tree branch at home. I think I'm going to go put them in the tree branch. Aww. The, um, the nest and burrow tutorial is fun and the, they would be fun to make some, some burrows yeah, for. Yeah, burrow. Yeah. 
So thank you so much for being here today and every other day that you tune in. And um, Mermaids. Mermaids are up. What do you mean mermaids are up? Next week. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be, I'm going to go overhead because, oh, okay. be, because it hasn't been done. You know, it's not a tutorial yeah. and it's a little detail oriented. Um, so, oh, so yeah, so that'll be good. What else is happening this week? Um, I'll pretty much be getting ready for that and the horse. Um, the horse is what was one of the courses. So if I learn anything along the way with the horse, I'll share. Um, I'll share on fanfare. It's been a long time since I've made one. Um, but that's all. Okay, I'm going to go enjoy the beautiful sunshine and um, see you soon. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody.